Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Who is on? Who is here? It is a little bit after 7.30. 7.32. I'm a little late, but I'm here. Welcome, 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 welcome to my live feed. Hello, who's there? Welcome, Chastity. I think that's you. Hey, good morning. Good evening. How are you? Who is on here? It's Thursday evening. It's a little after 730. I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I want to wait a few more seconds before we get into it. Um, in the meantime, tell me something good. I'm calling today. Tell me something good Thursday because let's be real. There's been a lot of bad in the media recently. Um, a lot of sad things happening around the world. It's not new, but it is becoming, um, we're, we're getting more, it's becoming more frequent that we're getting news of it and details. And so tell me something good Thursday is here. Hey Yvette. So let's get started. I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I am a family physician and a certified health coach and I helped overwhelmed, overextended professionals to choose themselves in personal wellness. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Tamaju. And as you can see, I wanted to just talk about tips for managing the never-ending cycle of bad news stories. Ooh, long title. Long title. So... <laughs> So again, I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I am a family physician and a certified health coach, and I help overwhelmed, overextended professionals to choose themselves through personal health. And I am here to just talk to you all about some tips for managing the never-ending cycle of bad news. And let's be clear, it seems like it's a never-ending cycle of bad news, but there's a lot of good news too. There's a lot of good news in the world. There's a lot of good happening in the world, and we get to talk about how to choose good news and choose goodness and choose to expose ourselves to some of that to negate some of the bad or the negative news that we're hearing on a regular basis. So let's start with the preface. So I woke up this morning, and like most people, my phone is somewhere around me. It's within reach. Um, because my alarm is on my phone, I use my phone for different things. Um, but it's in reach and so I woke up and at some point during my waking up process I looked at the time like most of us would do and I have a little news app I looked on the news app and of course what I saw was bad news um, there was a tragedy in California as most of you are aware um, and so that's the first thing that I kind of happened to see this morning and it's an automatic you know your heart automatically drops when you see something like that you're like not again what's going on in the world and you start you could actually start really early in your day to ha start a negative thought cycle and so how do we navigate that how do we um come back from that negative thought cycle and for some people maybe that maybe doesn't happen early in the day you know maybe it happens after you've had your first cup of coffee and you're on your commute to work or maybe it happens when you get to work folks are talking about what happened on the news the night before or that morning Maybe you're not somebody who checks the news at all until late in the day and by then a whole lot has happened and you are playing catch up and you're binge watching the news because you missed a lot and you feel compelled to catch up. Hey Shaman. And so just talking about when we are exposed to what appears to be lots of things that can be very stressful, negative and very anxiety provoking, how do we manage that? And so, um, you know, in the past week and a half, we've had, we've had bombings and um, bomb, bomb threats, sorry, and um, shootings and um, just a lot, a lot of heavy things. And then, of course, there's been political things happening and it's not all been great. Um, and so how do we navigate those feelings that arise when we are bombarded, it seems, with so much that isn't always very easy to to uh, manage or to digest and so tips for that um, just wanted to bring you some tips some of them I have done myself 
and it helps me to stay grounded and positive when things are starting to head a little south. Hey, Savannah, thank you for coming on. And some of them um, are th things that I'm hoping to try or trial to see if they help bring light into my day when the day seems to be headed in the wrong direction. And so the first tip that I have is to focus on your breath. What do I mean by that? For me, this morning I saw the news report about the mass shooting and I felt my heart sink. <laughs> Chastity, you're so funny. I felt my heart sink, I felt my breath quicken and I had to just focus on my breath. Okay, Teresa, just breathe. Just think through this. How do you want to spend the rest of your day? So I clicked off of the news feed, put my phone down, and did what I should have done before, which was set my intention for the day, and pray and, and get in a, a mindset of gratitude and positivity and recognizing that although I have this information served to me on a platter directly on my phone, right here, first thing I could see in the morning, there is a lot of other things overnight that have happened that have been very positive that maybe I have to search and dig onto all that other stuff to find out about. And it's not to forget what happened because we never want to forget the lives lost or in any tragedy. It's not to forget what happened, but it's giving myself and allowing myself time to process on my time, on my terms, in a healthy and productive way. And so that's the first tip is to focus on your breath you get bad news you turn on the news media you check your phone you're online something pops up maybe you weren't prepared to handle it you're you're not in the right space for that maybe you're at work or at the doctor's office maybe it's just not the right time to deal with those emotions set it aside focus on your breath breathe through some of those feelings and emotions and thought that surface and give yourself permission to say not right now I will deal with this at another time. And it's okay. It's not being selfish. Sometimes it's self-preservation, especially if you're not in any imminent danger. If it's something that's happening um, remotely from you, you do have time to set your intention to deal with it at another time without feeling guilty or sad or bad that you were able to do that and maybe someone else can't because they're directly impacted by what's going on. Oh, Savannah, I'm sorry. Is it freezing up? I must have a not so great connection. Let's see. Um, I think I just noticed that too. So that's my tip number one. How bad is the freezing? All right, let me move my camera a little bit. All right, let's see if it still freezes up. So that's tip number one. Tip number two realize that you have the power within you to choose differently what do i mean by that it's, it kind of ties into tip number one you don't have to see the news this very minute you don't have to sit for 30 minutes watching the same news reel of the same um you know victim videos and gunshot videos and dialogue about the shooter and his intentions or about anything else negative that is happening you have the power to remove yourself from that. What I ask folks to do in a situation that is very trying is to find a space to deal with that. So at some point during the day, you say, okay, I'm in a good space. I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to get the information I need to be of benefit. So let's say you're remote from the issue or the event or whatever's happening, and you just need to know the details to reach out to your friends and family who are in the midst of that and, and let them know that you're thinking about them. Or you need to know the de details so you can know who to send a care package to or if you want to send a donation. Maybe you just want to have enough information to, um, you know, send up a prayer for the folks who are involved. Give yourself 10 minutes at some point in the day to get the details to do that. Whether it's sitting in front of the in front of a trusted news station to do that, getting your phone and getting on your um, news website to get that information or to read that report, find a time and space when it's a safe space to cry or grieve or do whatever you have to do. Give yourself permission to do that for 10, 15 minutes max, and then put it down, let it go, walk away. 
if you're in a setting where other folks around you want to binge watch the news reel over and over and they want to channel surf from different news channels to get the same victim testimonies or victim statements or see the same um, type of scenes then you have to politely excuse yourself and you have the power to do that oh I'm sorry Savannah oh hopefully when it replays it'll replay smoother than what's happening now but you have the power in you to decide what you're going to expose yourself to and just because social media um, makes everything readily available to you and you can be ping 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 getting notifications all night long about what's going on in the world if it's not directly affecting you if you don't have to be evacuated or leave a situation emergently if you are in a position where you could turn off those notifications and give yourself time to process do that you have to empower yourself you don't have to be exposed to anything that you're not ready to deal with in that moment. Maybe you have to deal with it at some point, but you don't have to deal with it in that moment if you don't feel equipped, if you don't feel you have the right support. Sometimes maybe, I tell, I tell folks, I don't have the bandwidth right now. For instance, if I'm in clinic and I'm trying to save someone who has high blood sugar or high blood pressure, I don't have the bandwidth to worry about something that's happening in another state, in another country. I still wanna worry about it. Obviously, I wanna care about it, but that's not the right time to get distracted unless I'm in imminent danger. And so sometimes it is important to remind yourself, this is not the right time to get distracted unless I'm in an imminent danger. I have to deal with this situation and then tonight when I have a minute, I will address these emotions and get the information and sit in front of the TV for this amount of time and do this. Give yourself the power to do that and don't feel guilty that you've given yourself the power to do that and other people aren't able to do that because they're directly dealing with it. Because your preservation, your self-preservation, your mental preservation, your, your wellness and health is gonna be a benefit to those folks who are directly dealing with trauma when you're able to help them. Hey Rick, so give yourself permission to do that. You have the power. And tip number three is to surround yourself with good. There is a lot of negative, bad, scary, really worrisome things happening in the world. I will not deny that. And if I listen to it all day long, I could get really negative and very worried and very paranoid and very anxious like, like some, some of us do. Um, surround yourself with good. I have friends that volunteer at homeless shelters. I have folks that volunteer at convalescent homes. I have folks that um, visit family and and give lots of hugs and I, I know one lady at church she hugs really well imagine on a really bad day when the world seems to be just going south getting a hug from the right person could really make a difference well how about if you were that right person if you have friends or family who are really struggling with the traumatic things that are happening around us and you have a little bit extra to give give it love on them hug on them let them talk to you give them permission to talk to you for 10 minutes about what they're feeling let them know that their feelings are justifiable, but help them to weigh it out of that. Help them with the tips that you have in you to navigate some of those negative feelings and emotions. We have to surround ourselves with good, and sometimes good is family. Maybe your family is drama, but when a lot of negative has happened in the world, there's something about being around family, about, about eating around the table, about hugging each other, whispering in cousins' ears and giggling together that reminds you that there's some good in the world still. And sometimes it's your turn to give good, and sometimes it's your turn to get good. And if you're in a place where you need to get good, you gotta ask for it. Just tell your family and friends, I'm really struggling right now with what's happening all around. I'm getting nervous about traveling and going out and doing things. There's so much negative that's coming at me and I, I kinda need something from you all right now. Hey, Nicole, hug, whatever. Just just ask what you need from the people you trust the most. And believe me, most people are feeling this right now. Um, you know, I was just reading a news article that talks about high school students are struggling with PTSD in, in significant proportion because of so many of the things that are happening in the high schools. And, you know, of course, we you know college students are struggling with anxiety and PTSD from all the things that are happening on, on their campuses. And it's not just them. But but now, years after Columbine, we're getting a lot of information and data on how trauma, yes, Nicole, random acts of kindness, how trauma can affect people. 
and how that trauma is manifesting. So give yourself permission to surround yourself with good. The holidays are coming up. There are going to be a lot of people struggling with it because they've had some losses this year. We've had some heavy losses, some of us. And this is the time to reach out for them. Hey, Tessa, and surround them with love and whatever it is you think they need. Don't wait, wait for them to ask because some people don't know that they need it until the day of. Don't let someone who's had a significant loss wind up at home by themselves on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day because we all forgot to reach out for them. If you're in a good place right now, reach out to somebody who's not, who you know has had some losses or who has had a really tough time with the negative news. Um, and then one last tip, and this is one I'm struggling with. This is not one I have mastered at all. And I was reading about this one, and it just talks about just recognizing that there's no such thing as absolute safety. There's no guaranteed safety. No one is ever absolutely safe. We know this. I mean, we know about the Titanic, the unsinkable ship that sank. I mean, there's nothing that you could do besides being smart and being prepared that may make a difference. And after you've done everything that you think you could do, sometimes it's still not enough. But we cannot let that beat us out. So plan. Talk to your family about planning. What do I mean by that? You know, make sure that you've talked to your family members about a living will, an advanced directive. Hey Pam, if something, hey Dr. Indy, <laughs> if something happens to me or to my family, what's the plan? If, I, if I'm in the hospital for prolonged weeks or months, what's the plan? If I'm no longer here, what's the plan? Let's not be afraid to talk about what the plan is. We plan for everything else. We plan weddings, we plan birthdays, we spend thousands of dollars and all that. Well, planning your end of life is free. An advanced directive is free. You go to your state website and you download the, the forms, you talk to your family about them, you fill them out and plan. You're never too young to have a plan. Exactly, do all you can, but still plan to be prepared in case of an emergency. You never want to not know what your family wanted. You never want your family to not know what you wanted if the worst happens. It's scary to talk about, but when we talk about it, we empower ourselves and we empower our families to know what to do if the unthinkable happens. And something about that empowerment takes some of the fear away. So let's talk about it. Let's plan. Let's help each other through the really, really, really tough times ahead and the times that we've already passed through. It's been a rough year. It's been a rough couple of years. It's been a rough <laughs> couple of decades. I mean, I'm, I was just thinking about the, the children that came up in the 9-11 um, you know, tragedy, you know, who lost parents and family members. We've had a lot going on, you all. Let's love on each, on each other. <sighs> I say a lot, I always do. Um, but thank you all for listening. Breathe. Give yourself back the power to turn off social media and put away the, the um, notifications and take a step away from the negative and surround yourself with good. And when everything else is said and done, plan and we'll be all right. This is Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm a family physician and certified health coach. I help overwhelmed and overextended professionals to choose themselves and their wellness. Thank you all for checking in for this <laughs> Tell Me Something Good. <laughs> y'all still need to tell me something good. Um, Thursday chat. I hope this was beneficial. And I hope I didn't say too much too fast. And I hope it all made sense. Um, blessings and sharing is caring. Let's try to pass the word around and help each other navigate this negative time um, in our lives and find the positive in it because there is positive. Hey, Leroy. Be blessed, everyone. Bye.